Hello, I'm Avoiding Relegation, and welcome to episode two of Journey Man in the USA. I know I promised I wouldn't do it again, but, you know, I think it's going to have to be a thing. Uh, it is the end of the first season. We're top. We're champions of the division. We get promoted. We had an ad. Well, it's been an, it's been a roller coaster of a season, actually, to be fair. The latter part being a sort of downhill run to the top spot, if you know what I mean. Coasted almost. But uh, my job was under threat earlier in the season, so uh, we will go through that and I will show you everything that happened. But uh, if we take a look at the division, we've come out as champions. Boston have been promoted in second, and through playoffs, Greater Lowell United have gone up. So uh, that is good news for them. Kingston, of course, is the last team you saw us play against. Um, they actually finished second bottom, so they did not have a good season. But uh, what we'll do first is we'll have a look at the schedule and I'll show you how everything went. <laughs> Okay, so if we take a look, obviously last time you saw us was against Kingston, which we won 3-1 against them. Um, things kind of went a bit wrong after that. Up until that point, we'd, we'd had a mixed bag in the friendlies. We hadn't done bad at the start of the National League. We'd won our first game. You know, we'd only lost one in the first five, but admittedly we'd only won two in the first five. So not ideal. And then it was only one out of the last four, but then it just kind of went to hell. And honestly, around about this point, I, my job was under threat. Um, it went horribly, horribly wrong. Um, as I say, straight after that fabulous Kingston result away, we lost 2-0 to Junior Lone Star. We then had a friendly, admittedly. <coughs> I started introducing, excuse me, started introducing friendlies in between to try and uh, improve team keys and stuff like that. But it was actually quite difficult, even though it was sort of smaller teams and all the rest of it, to actually get results against them. So I did stop doing it, but that was a 1-1. FA Euro at the time doing very well up top. Uh, lost, uh, sorry, lost. Drew away. 1-1 one, one Barcelona getting the only goal there. And then we lost a friendly against Cedar Stars Academy. We then lost against Rio Grande Valley Toros. Toros. We then lost uh, against Lee Valley United FC. And I mean, that was a corker. What a barnstormer. Barnstorm. Barn burner. 4 5 for crying out loud. As you can see, playing a slightly weird formation. Uh, the formation has indeed changed over that time. But what I did was, because I'd struggled, as you know, I we had a bit of a, a, a quality issue at the back. Um, we had a kind of a quality issue throughout the team. I started just looking at the nearby teams in the division and trying to find their players that were decent and poached them and it was actually very very successful um we signed a lot of players we also let a lot of players go but it was very very successful um as a result our first friendly after that with the irish americans and uh i think palembe was new at that point i might be wrong do you know what i mean things started to change and of course hartford our new signing top striker keen easy he came in from FC Motown, who were also in our division, and he'd already scored 14 and 30 games. So I was surprised he'd actually want to come, but he did. And uh, 56 goals in 41 games. Obviously, that includes what he did um, before he joined us. But, I mean, he's just... For this division, he's ridiculously OP. We had, weirdly, um, some issues with contract talks, which, considering that he's on... An amateur contract. It says it's expired, but uh, he says he's willing to stay. But anyway, the point being, nobody wants him, and I don't understand why. Somebody that prolific and who's done that well isn't drawing any attention. But yeah, as you can see, Kane, uh, Keen Easy, Keen Easy, he makes it look easy, just scored. And uh, like I say, we stopped leaking quite as many goals. Um, and it was a sea of green. Right through November, right through December, right through January, February, and into March. Um, and we finally lost a game after that ridiculous run. That's like a Juventus-level run for, for me, um, compared to what I normally do. It just stunning. But like I say, a lot of transfers. And, and this man here, even when we lost, still scored. Um, FAU, of course, having had a, a decent season. But uh, lost again. Greater Lowell, as you know, they went up in... Uh, Playoffs and uh, Fort Pitt, who I can't actually tell you where they finished 12th overall. Um, managed to put five past us and make it 5-4. Again, just stunning goals. But again, the, the, the players I've been playing against, 
these are the people that I would scout and uh, look at. And uh, yeah, like I say, one particular game that will stand out for me, though, is the Greater Binghamton game, which we won 9 0, 41 shots, 17 on target, and we scored 9. Easy, Souza, Thomas, easy again. Easy, making it look easy. Gabara, uh, Gloucester, Gloucester, and Sousa, just brilliant. And that was playing 4 4 2, which is exactly what we've been doing uh, since that slight isometric effort, which was not ideal. So, yeah, we're a 4 4 2 team now, which is brilliant. As you can see, we've started to build. A bit of cohesion in there as well with people playing well together. But like I say, Mr. Easy, he would prefer to be a pressing forward, but I pre I play him as an advanced forward. And like I say, he is just stunning. So it bodes well, because like I say, we're going up, and it bodes well for the next season. Um, we still do have a couple of areas that need some work in terms of quality. If we actually look at the team report, this shows it slightly better. We are now stronger in central midfield. We could... We're not bad on the wings, but it could be improved. I'd like to see three stars in there. Really, that would be my, fa you know, that would be my favourite thing to do. Allison could be improved upon. Um, and again, we need another centre half and uh, a left back, really. But like I say, it's been great. I mean, it's it's felt it's gone from struggling and me nearly losing my job to being OP and really. Morrison, Souza, and Easy are kind of the guys who've changed that for me, if you know what I mean. They've changed the team. So that's been brilliant. Um, in terms of, obviously, how the uh, league looks, what I want to do is go up and look at the Premier League. Whoops, the very, very Premier League, the United States Premier League, which is, of course, whoops, I just clicked too many, didn't I? There we go. United States Premier League. Champions are Los Angeles. Columbus and Seattle finishing second and third. But getting relegated. Bearing in mind nobody's ever been rele relegated from, you know, the MLS. DC United, Houston and Orlando City. So they are the first teams to be relegated. Now, the United States Championship, uh, if we look at the league table here, Colorado have gone up of champions, but now Nashville and Cincinnati have been promoted and are going to be Premier League teams. So that's quite exciting. I mean, that's only a very small change. It's not It's not like LA or New York City, who, of course, Champions League holders for the previous season, I think, last year, 2019. Anyway, maybe 2018. Nevertheless, it's not like them getting relegated, but still, you know, this has never happened in the history of actual MLS football that, uh, you know, these teams have been promoted and so on and so forth. So... That's part of what excites me and it is interesting. Um, I have been looking for jobs, but the reality is I've only had one season. Whilst it's been an absolutely storming and successful season, it's not enough to uh, really... There's, there's been teams... I, the only opportunities I've had have been sort of lateral moves, I guess is a point. And I don't think, considering how well we've been playing lately, that that would be a strong move. Um, had I been, you know, fired, then yes, I would have taken anything, but... We're going up a division, and like I say, it is a journeyman. I'm not going to stick with Torch, but I think it is smart to stick with Torch for the time being and maybe uh, see how we do in our second season. Because obviously, in terms of my um, profile, you know, it's it needs some work, shall we say. I'm not very good at managing finances. I'm 45% uh, hands-on approach. I feel that's low, but okay. Team discipline there, they're relative, but you know what I mean. There's obviously work to be done there um, in terms of improving me, um, and obviously I have no attributes and I have no reputation. But hopefully, more success with Torch will uh, attract more teams. But uh, like I say, I do, I do want one of the big names. I'm, I'm mostly one of the teams I'm really keeping an eye out for. Um, later on in the save when it comes up will be Miami. I don't know why. I've decided I want the Miami job if I see it um, and be the manager of Miami. Oh, my cat is leaving us. He was uh, just here for the recording. Okay, one of the things I said I was going to tell you about was the transfers and oh my goodness, did we make a few. Um, as far as people going out, um, Craig Gonzalez went to uh, Lay Valley United on a free. Chris Lewis went to Birmingham on a free. And that's Birmingham, Alabama, not Birmingham, 
Yeah, Birmingham Legion FC, but in Alabama as opposed to uh, the UK, obviously. Miguel Nanasinkum went to Boston River. Shane Ray went to Connecticut. Eric Lopez, Reading under 23s, Reading United. Um, Reading United AC, again. Not Reading, Reading. Not the other Reading. Anyway, Gotchi Academy took Esteban Alonso and Neil Camarera, Camarena. Oh, Camarena. He uh, went to Connecticut on a free. Um, I think he was the last one to go. But, uh, yeah, in terms of the people we brought in, there was a few loans. And, in fact, we'll just have a look down. Fernando Cox came in from Titanes on a free. Looked better than that when we scouted him. Um, and, unfortunately, this is the same story for a lot of these players. As you can see, he has uh, now gone to Gotchi Academy. Alonso, but he would not be a good fit for us. Um, Rivas, he's still at Torch, but he's on the list. Again, not bad physicals, but when we started bringing players in, he did not uh, look the business. I mean, he still managed. I oh, know, he didn't play for us. I really thought he'd played for us. Um, anyway, Callum Gomez from New, New Jersey Teamsters on loan. Back at New Jersey Teamsters. I basically, uh, yeah, didn't play him enough. He didn't do too badly. Six appearances, one goal, and uh, four assists, and he did look a lot better. But uh, we didn't play him enough, and, and that was that. So Davey Mariolis from New Jersey Teams just came in. Kim Batch from Maryland Bobcats, along with Jose Castillo. Um, Jose Castillo. Yeah. That was my fault. I didn't actually uh, scout that one. But, uh, yeah, D Dimitriou, he came in for New Jersey Teamsters, as did Greg Cavell. As you can see, we brought in a lot of loans, and uh, some of them didn't work out. Pedro Gonzalez from Reading came in on free. Um, I think he's now retired. Um, Goran Johansson came in for Lansdowne Yonkers. He's now at TSF. Didn't quite cut the mustard for us, but, I mean... As you can see, so many. Um, the better ones are down near the bottom, to be fair. Uh, Maximiliano Garcia, um, he's come along a bit. He was only one stars, he's up to two stars. And again, eight starts, five sub opportunities, five goals, three assists. So, again, I think he's got a future with us. Physicals could do with some work, but he actually has half decent technicals compared to a lot of other people. So, he is a breakthrough prospect, but uh, he does have, uh, you know, a pretty decent future with us, I would say. Um, did I just put that in the wrong order? I feel like I just clicked something and got it the wrong way around because I'm not seeing the same people that I was. Michael Oxley, D'Souza. Order it by date. So, I will edit this later. So yeah, a um, couple in from Boston. Um, Fabio de Souza, of course, who's had a great season. He came in initially to be a left back, to be fair, but uh, ended up playing left wing more often than not. But uh, again, not played a massive amount, but managed uh, two starts, seven sub appearances, but still managed five assists. So he's definitely in and around the first team fairly regularly. We've got uh, Ian Morgan. A little bit of developing to do, but still managed three starts and two goals and one assist from central midfield, no less. Um, but he's a bit more of a utility player, to be honest with you. Um, but nevertheless, we've got a few players like that. So I, as much as I'd love to go through all of them, this video is already going to be about three weeks long anyway. But uh, there were a lot of changes, a lot, a lot of changes. Of course, uh, Mr. Easy and Andre, Andrew Souza, sorry. They are by far my top signings. I mean, he is perhaps not as technically skilled as some of the other midfielders, and he is 31 now, but 40 games, 6 goals, 10 assists. 
he's been solid. He's been stalwart playing in central midfield rather than AMC because obviously we are four four two. But yeah, very very happy. Like I say, he and Easy more than any of the other players realistically turned the team around. Like I say, Keen Easy, fifty six goals in forty one games. I mean that's insanity. I don't think I've had a player in football manager history with uh, figures like that. He's he's twenty nine. He's He's going to start winding down in the next two or three seasons. But uh, like I say, I don't understand why nobody's chasing him. And, and I'm also very happy about it. So uh, we'll see how that goes, whether or not we get to carry on. But uh, in terms of moving forward, if we have a quick look at the team report, uh, as I mentioned before, we still need a left back in the centre half. Maybe some work on the rings and maybe another striker. But obviously the main job will be avoiding relegation. And... Uh, yeah, improving my reputation, really. I The intention is to sort of, uh, next episode, play a few games in, show you a match, and you'll be able to see, obviously, the new transfers we've made and stuff like that in the close season. And uh, from there, we will, next episode after that, will be the end of that season, which we will review. Um, I think once we start getting in position to uh, challenge for real trophies, whether, you know, whomever that's with, whatever team I'm managing, that's when I might do sort of... Uh, more episodes in between, shall we say, for a season, like maybe some cup games, stuff like that. Okay, that is everything for this episode. Please do hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And also consider hitting the subscribe button as well. Very much helps me out. Um, also, consider following me on Twitch too. Um, you will find me twice a week streaming Halifax Wanderers and uh, sometimes other stuff too. Uh, in the meantime, I've been avoiding relegation. This has been Journeyman in the USA. Thank you very, very much for watching and I'll see you on the next episode.